In this video, I'm going to discuss two things. Number one, how you can prove that you were harassed at work if you still have your job and you want it to stop. And two, how an employment lawyer like me proves unlawful harassment in court if you were fired from your job and you have a good case. This video is long overdue, so I know it's going to be very helpful. We are first going to examine harassment as it relates to people who are still employed at their job and they want to stay employed, but they also want to stop the harassment from happening again in the future. This is a very difficult thing to do, but if you pay close attention, I'm going to share some awesome strategies that actually work. Then we are going to look at how a lawyer like me proves unlawful harassment to a jury. And that will be something you want to stick around for in case your situation at work goes south and you need to take legal action in the future. But before we do either of those things, we need to get two very important things out of the way. Number one, I will only be discussing California law because that is where I have a license to practice law. However, this video will help anyone who watches it no matter where they are because most of the tips I give in this video do not depend on the law. However, this video is not legal advice. You're watching a video. If you need legal advice, call a lawyer in your jurisdiction so he or she can hear your story and then give you specific advice. If you are in California and your situation has gotten really bad, you can contact my office for a consultation if you feel like I've earned your phone call. Next, we need to talk about the legal definition of harassment. You need to have a general idea of what the legal definition of harassment is before we start discussing strategies because there is a significant difference between things that are unfair and things that are unlawful. Generally, California's harassment and hostile work environment law prohibit managers, supervisors, or coworkers uh, from treating you poorly because you have a protected characteristic. And this is a protected class or category. In California, the protected classes are things that most people already know about. Race, religion, gender, sex, age, disability, marital status, ethnicity, etc. But what does this actually mean? Basically, if your boss or coworker is being mean to you because of your age, race, ethnicity, disability, or something else that is protected by law, then you may be facing unlawful harassment. Now, it's important to note, if your boss or coworker is picking on you for some other reason, a non-protected reason, such as your work performance, your attitude, or your tardiness, you may be facing mean and even unfair workplace bullying, which in and of itself is not illegal. I made a video about the difference between unlawful harassment and bullying, and I recommend you watch it. I'll put a link below in the description. Now, if you're still confused as to what unlawful harassment actually means, I cover the definition and every single protected characteristic extensively in my video called Hostile Work Environment. Go watch that video after I finish this one. I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can click it and watch that next. Okay, now we can get to the good stuff. If you're still employed, how do you prove that you're being harassed? My simple response to this is you don't. Look, if you're still employed and you're researching how to prove harassment online, you probably have three different objectives. Number one, you probably want to stop the harassment from occurring, right? Number two, you definitely probably would like to save your job. And number three, you probably want a lay, to lay a foundation that a lawyer like me can use down the road if legal action becomes necessary. None of these three things require you to prove harassment. In fact, you don't need to prove anything to accomplish these three objectives. More on this in just a second. Going to great lengths to prove something to HR or an executive at your company will more likely just paint a big target on your back. It'll disrupt your work and the flow of work of everybody else. It'll upset management and it'll probably irrevocably ruin the relationship with your coworkers and or boss. I'm here to suggest a better way. Simply put the company on notice 
with a respectful, polite, and helpful written complaint. What do I mean by that? Submit a polite and helpful complaint in an email to the appropriate authority at your company. This complaint should be non-threatening, concise, and it should identify that you feel that you're being treated poorly because, and that is where you would insert the protected activity that you believe is triggering the harassment. This complaint should not use conclusory legal terms, it shouldn't jump to conclusions, it shouldn't threaten them, and it should not be done verbally. If you want to know more about how to complain at work properly, especially regarding harassment, go watch my video on that exact subject. It's called How to Complain at Work and Prevent Retaliation or something like that. Again, I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can jump over there and watch it. Making a complaint my way, this way, will do a few wonderful things. It'll probably stop the harassment in its tracks. Most employers, especially if they have human resources, are smart enough to know when they might be opening the legal liability door. They don't like that and they will probably instruct the bad guy or the bad girl to knock it off. Or they will separate the two of you, both of which are good things. Number two, a good written complaint will dramatically help your lawyer down the road if legal action becomes necessary. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. And number three, while a complaint in and of itself is not going to save your job, it will demonstrate to the company that you are willing to fight for yourself. Lawyers often say there is value in the fight. When you stand up for yourself, you educate the opposing side that there are consequences if they do not act appropriately. If they fire you now after you've complained in writing, they might face significant legal consequences. However, don't let this go to your head. If you complain the wrong way, you won't save your job, you'll destroy it. So go watch my complaint video because it will absolutely help you make a proper complaint. I'll leave a link below in the description. Before we get to the lawsuit stuff, I wanted to take a quick second to point something out to people watching this video. Generally, you can prevent harassment from ever happening to you in the first place by providing your employer and coworkers with what I like to call undeniable value. Let's be honest, a lot of people who complain at work are bad employees to start. They like to point the finger at somebody else in order to deflect from their own poor job performance. On the other hand, you rarely hear about really valuable employees gain, getting harassed. It's not a secret. Companies will protect valuable people. So one way you can prevent harassment from happening to you in the first place or to dramatically mitigate its effects is to become one of those valuable people. On the other hand, if you're being picked on or harassed by one of these valuable people, you're going to need a lawyer to help fight for your situation because it's very unlikely that the company is going to come to your aid at the expense of a valuable person. If the company fires you because you complained about harassment and you're able to find a good lawyer to take your case, how does he or she go about proving that you were unlawfully harassed? That's what the rest of this video is all about. First, lawyers look at the documents. We'll look at the emails, text messages, and any other documents related. As you recall, unlawful harassment is when the harasser picks on you because of one of your protected characteristics. In most harassment cases, our client comes to us with text messages, emails, or other documents or social media posts that demonstrate bad behavior by the harasser. Therefore, it's very important that you never delete or destroy these documents, text messages, or emails. If they're on, comp on a company phone or a company computer, print out yourself a copy and take it home. I can't tell you how many people tell me that they were harassed via text message, but when I ask them to send me those text messages, they say, oh, I deleted them. Why on earth would you ever do that? Why would you delete documents? Keep copies, folks. Destroying evidence is a bad idea all the way around. If there are no written or recorded instances of harassment, then we get to look at the statements from firsthand witnesses. We obviously like friendly witnesses, but we can also get favorable testimony from hostile witnesses in depositions during the discovery process of the lawsuit. Second, we look at how the employer treated you and how they treated the harasser before and after you complained about harassment. 
It's absolutely critical that we establish a baseline of treatment. How were you treated by the company before the harassment started or before you complained about harassment? What about after you complained about harassment? And the legitimacy of your reasons for your termination. We want to know how the employer treated other employees, if any, who have complained about harassment as well. Especially those who have the same protected characteristics as you. After that, we need to establish how the company treated the harasser once they became aware of your complaint. Did they shield and protect the harasser or did they investigate and reprimand the harasser? Specifically, we want to show that you are a satisfactory employee before you complained about the harassment. Had you ever been written up or reprimanded? How long had you worked at that company before? Had it been a month or 12 years? We want to know this so if the company lies and says, no, Johnny was a bad employee. We know he was a bad employee. And we can show that he was a bad employee. But then I see, well, if you worked there for 12 years, he couldn't have been that bad because he was there for 12 years. How do we go about proving all this? First, we look at your personnel file, your performance documents, write-ups, if any, your emails, your text messages. Second, we get people to testify under oath that you were a good employee while the company is going to try to get people to testify that you were a bad employee. Third, we gather all the information and we put it into a comprehensive timeline of events so we can explain your, so your story in order to the jury. Third, what do lawyers do? We look for the liars. In litigation, lawyers have various discovery tools that we use to collect information. This includes interrogatories, requests for admission, depositions. These tools allow us to collect information under oath. That means if you or the company lies when responding to one of these questions, the liar has committed perjury. If you commit perjury, the jury's going to know about it and they're going to know that you're a liar. And guess what happens when somebody lies to a jury? They lose just about every time. Let's say the supervisor who fired you claims under oath that the only reason you were fired was because you didn't finish an important project on time. You were supposed to finish it on Monday, but you didn't finalize it until Friday. But during discovery, we prove that the company has never fired anyone for finishing a project four days late. Additionally, we depose another manager who testifies that he and the supervisor had a private meeting two days before your termination. And during that meeting, the supervisor said that he was pissed about your harassment complaint. He doesn't trust you anymore and that you are going to have to go. While it's true that you didn't finish the project on time, if we show the jury that the supervisor lied to them about why you were fired, it will help prove that the real reason for your termination was your harassment complaint. In the legal world, we call this a pretext. Essentially, the lie is a fake reason for firing where the real reason is a protected activity or protected characteristic. I made an entire video about pretext, so if you want to know more about that, uh, I'll leave a link below in the description. Finally, we package together the sequence of events. We package together your job performance, the company's discipline history, and all the documents and the evidence that we have, and we present that to a jury during trial. And the jury is going to decide on a preponderance of the evidence burden whether or not your termination was substantially motivated by your harassment complaint or by your protected characteristic. Under the preponderance standard, the burden of proof is met if you prove to the jury that there is a greater than 50% chance that your retaliation claim or your harassment claim is true. This isn't criminal court with a beyond a reasonable doubt standard. In civil cases like harassment, it's a lower burden of proof. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you are in California and you think that you have a harassment case, you can contact my office for a free consultation. I'll leave my information on the screen in case you want to contact me. Finally, this video is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to proving harassment. My website has a lot of detail regarding hostile work environments and harassment. It's much more comprehensive than this video.
So if I didn't answer a question that you have, I recommend that you either go to my website or you watch one of my other harassment videos on YouTube. That is all I have for you. I hope this was informative and I hope you have a fantastic day.